that I am known for stealing the Book of Mormon. Holler! Didn't realize that the Marriott was the largest distributor of the Book of Mormon, but yes, I did steal scripture. And so that was four years ago this week. Now, the scary thing is I was somebody who was such an anti-member, but two years ago in July, I recorded my first High Five Live that had over 26,000 views because of all of you. So I want you to tell me where you're from, what questions we can answer, we will reply. We have England joining, so holler. We love our peeps in England. So I just want to give you some background on myself. The whole topic of this is why I stay. Why I stole a Book of Mormon and am known for that. And I just was like going, this is the last church in the world I would have ever expected to join. But now it's four years later and I am still firmly cemented with my feet in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're going to talk briefly about how you can be cemented, and I would love to hear your comments. So why does Dennis Schleicher stay? Yes, so I serve as the Elders Quorum President, or in the first councilman for the Elders Quorum President. I love all of your hearts and thumbs coming up. Keep them going. It keeps me exciting. It keeps the paprika in me. So I serve as the uh, first councilman to the Elders Quorum President in Glastonbury, Connecticut. I'm also a ward mission leader, and I got to be honest with you, they are never going to release me from that calling. Oh my gosh, I am going to be a ward mission leader for the rest of my life. But I also have another calling that I'm able to serve with missionaries all over the world, which is so super cool. And I almost started an LGBT protest at the dedication to the Hartford Temple. Oh my goodness. Then I received first presidential approval to have my endowment early. <laughs> what was I thinking? So here's my temple recommend holder. It's in my wallet that I keep at all times. And I wear a CTR band on my wedding band. It reminds me not only to choose the right, but choose to remember him and current temple recommend holder, which is really something that's important to me. So let me go over some of my background. It's awfully windy here, but I don't mind. I am flexible. We can make this work. So why I stay? I am actually asked, I was asked to write another book about this called Why I Stay. And it's, it's why would an LGBT member live a temple worthy life? And that is something that's really important to me because we are losing so many people and it breaks my heart, breaks my heart. So one of the things I say is non-believers will not get me down. I don't have time for them. I know I use Instagram as my platform, not Facebook, because Facebook represents my past and it traumatizes me. If it wasn't for Becky McIntosh helping me today, I don't think I would have been able to go on live because I logged on today and it said 10 years ago today, you were doing this and I'm going, oh my gosh, that's so bad because converts have a past. But doesn't everybody have a past? Wouldn't you agree with that? Even members have a past. And that's what we have the atonement of Jesus Christ for. So please remember, if you've done something that's not inappropriate, or if you've done something inappropriate, like I was a, I wasn't a mess, I was a hot mess. So I, I say often, if you haven't experienced opposition from others in life, you haven't done anything incredible in yours. So I wanna hear your comments. Where have you experienced opposition? Tell us where you're from. I will be sure to get over my fake book, PTSD, and log on and comment to each and every one of your comments. That is super, super cool. So, you know, we all have agency. And this reminds me of Doctrine and Covenants 101, verse 79, that man may act in doctrines and principles according to the moral agency which I have given unto him, that every man be accountable for his own sins. And I am accountable for everything I do. But you know what? I, there's times I don't feel worthy. When we were dealing with this COVID pandemic and I was stranded in Utah, I was like staying with the State Relief Society president and she said, my husband and I don't feel comfortable with you going home. And I said, well, I don't wanna bother you. I ignored the prayers, I ignored 
the answers from God. And it, I was lying in bed, and it's like room of the day I was supposed to leave. Largest earthquake hit Salt Lake City County in 250 years. Moroni lost his trumpet and got demoted. Go figure. I looked up at God and said, please don't strike me with lightning. I get it. I'm staying put. But God knew I needed that family. He knew I needed to be around members. And if I can get through these turbulent times, we all can get through these turbulent times. So let me go through some of, some of my questions because I don't want to keep you long. I want to keep this quick. We're going to put some paprika in this. I said, fasten your seatbelts and take your vitamins because we're going on an awesome ride. So, you know what? Our church has a past. Don't we all? We kind of talked about this. But this is a quote I have from my first book that I wrote that I didn't talk about, but it's called Is He Nuts? Why Would a Gay Man Join the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? And it's been on the bestsellers list. It's an audible. It's you name it. You can follow me on Instagram at Dennis Schleicher. Uh, you know, on Instagram, because that's where I do most, that's where I do most of my stuff. So I have a, I have a quote that's the number one highlighted quote in Kindle. Uh, Hesitation and doubt are legitimate feelings to have, but what we do next is the challenge. I have learned that the best response is, what do I need to learn from this? All of this is happening for a reason. When I was first given that calling as ward missionary, right after my baptism, I'm going, why me? Why? When I should have been saying, what do I need to learn from this? So ask yourself, if you have a calling you don't know anything about, what do you need to learn about that calling? So let's go into um, the pride circle. This is something that I deal with a lot. I see a lot of people that are prideful and not focusing on humility. And it's just a constant circle. And that's something that really is it, 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 it resonates with me. So there's a, there's a, it resonates, re- resonates with me because that's my past. That represents my past. I was a very prideful person. I thought I was happy and I was not happy at all. I was missing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there's a quote from um, uh, President Oakdoff that I resonate with. Humility directs our attention and love towards others and towards Heavenly Father's purpose. That is huge. I love, I love Elder Oakdoff. I love them all. I love Elder Oaks. I love everybody. I can testify that our prophet is called of God. I have multiple testimonies of that. I, I do, I do um, uh, zone conference, tra- zone mission, zone training meetings all over the world. I do firesides everywhere. I am becoming so crazy, crazy busy with doing talks and requests. I cannot wait to be sharing this gospel because we are out of COVID. We are out of COVID. And I'm able to now travel and I come to visit my peeps at the planet of Utah where I feel home. And I just love my peeps in Utah. I love my peeps everywhere. I don't care if you're in Brazil, Australia. You are a child of God. And I love each and every one of you. So, all right. You know, there's a quote that I have that I'm working on for my next book. It's actually a chapter title, so I'm going to give you a little secret. It's called Alone But Not Lonely. I can testify that when I spent nine and a half months last year in Utah doing firesides, devotionals, and book signings for, the, for Deseret and stuff and talks, I had member uh, families arguing over who was going to stay with me, like where I was going to stay. I will never be homeless in Utah, ever. And I do know I will be out here someday. I will be living out here. I'm just waiting for that prompting and I will be here. We got some geese flying by. Uh, If you ever saw the last video I did two years ago, search for it. It has over 25 or 26,000 views and shares. And when I closed my testimony, a whole flock of geese flew by going quack, quack, quack. And I thought that's appropriate because you know what? I'm referred to as the easy nuts guy. So let's quack away. I have no problem with it. I embrace it. There's nothing you can't ask me that I would not be offended. So let's go back to lonely, but not lonely. It reminds me of uh, John 14. He will not leave us alone as we pray and invite him into our lives. And that's exactly how I feel is I have the glow. I'm not saying it's easy. I deal with opposition from the adversary all the time. 
And that's why I know, but it's about developing a buddy system. In my iPhone, I have 30 to 40 returning missionaries that I will text and say, I'm having a faith crisis. They know whoever calls me back first is who handles me, who helps me through that. And then I get a priesthood blessing the next day. When was the last time you had a priesthood blessing? Especially the men that are watching, because I find they're so stubborn. Like, aren't men stubborn? Wouldn't you agree? They don't want to admit or ask for a priesthood blessing. Even when I say I would love to give you a priesthood blessing, because I just, I, I, I have a strong testimony of the power of the priesthood. And I, I just can't deny that. So let's continue to move on. When you, okay, so when you must navigate from your own revelation versus that of what other people are saying, so many people fall into the trap of listening and gossiping and falling in to what other people are saying. I don't do that. I read doctrine. I not only read doctrine, but I ponder it. And that is imperative. And my state president said to me when I taught a class on how to become a better member missionary, what is missing from being a better member missionary? I said, it's not only pondering, but it's applying action. Action is imperative. Because if you think about calling a neighbor or a ministering brother and sister and don't do it, you're not applying that action. And as an, in the elder quorum presidency and, and a ward mission leader, I look at my reports and I say to my elders quorum presidents that like, all right, like, come on, what's going on? Is it elders gone wild over there? I, I mean, you're getting zeros on your reports and I have 100%. Holler. So I always am on top of my calling because I'm learning from it each and every day. So, you know what? The gospel of the Church of Jesus Christ is perfect, but the members are not. And that's one thing we need to remember. The gospel is perfect. The church is blue, and the, the church, I mean, the book is blue, and the church is blue. Holler! So I have to say, I can tell you, yet, yeah, you know, member, but I gotta say, oh my gosh, so my last time since I've been on High Five Live, I was so green. I'm still green, but I was really green. I was greener than this grass. And I, for nine and a half months, I traveled and stayed with members. I had a friend say to me, I always thought it was a choice for you to be gay. 65 years, I thought being gay was a choice. And you opened up this whole can of worms. And I don't know how to get those worms back. So you just messed me up. I don't know what to do. That's the effect I have. If you're feeling judged in your chapel, I will attend church with you. My friends will attend church with you. I don't experience judgment from members. I get hate mail, death threats, and all that stuff from people who have left or anti-members. And whenever they comment on something I'm doing, it just makes it go viral. It's scary. And I say, and I, I know the trolls are out, and it's something... I'm on to something right. I am in the gospel of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We are not a church organization. We are family. And you need to know that. And I experienced that. And I understand everybody hasn't had the experience I have had, but I have been pounced on. So before I close this, I'm going to say a few other things. When, so, oh my gosh, this is like really, you, you must navigate. Okay. Have you given the gospel 100%? Have you given the gospel 100%? That's important. Because I find so many people call me or text me. And as I'm out here, I have some people that are really angry with me because I can't meet with them. And it breaks my heart because I overbooked myself. I overbooked. I want to meet each and every one of you. And I have people bearing their testimonies. And what it came to me was they need to be bearing it to their bishop or their mission president, or their, not mission president, but their um, ministering brothers or sisters, because I don't hold the keys over you. I would love to bear your burden, and I will be here for that, but I really want you to know that I'm so passionate about each and every one of you. I love you so much because we are all eternal brothers and sisters. So how do we minister to those who, who leave the church? I'm going to leave it to you like this because I'm running out of time. Simple. Leave the door open. 